It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is already in this place. I sense the anointing of the Lord. As pastor was saying those words over you, I was writing those words this morning. There's such power and authority that we have in the name of Jesus. But you know, I want to share something with you. A lot of us say in the name of Jesus. Do you know even Jesus had to earn that name? Okay, I'm knocking some of your religious theory this morning. Even Jesus had to receive that name. He had to earn it. When he came, he was born of the Holy Spirit by a virgin, which was Mary. He lived in this world as a son of man. When the Holy Ghost came upon him, then he wrought miracles. Just like you and me. He did it so that you and I can never say he came and was all God and then expected us to live a perfect life. But even then, he didn't have that name. He just had the name Jesus. But the day he died and he rose again, and he went into hell and he overcame the powers of darkness and he rose again and he went into the presence of God with the blood. Then he earned the name. That's why then they said, in the name of Jesus. He earned it, but he did it for you and for me. Now we can, in the name of Jesus, cast out demons and heal the sick. But no, you can't do that if you have not got acquainted with the name of Jesus. You can't just say, oh, I know Jesus. He said to the sons of Sceva, he said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Be careful. Don't just use the name of Jesus. Get acquainted with the name of Jesus. And the only way you get acquainted with the name of Jesus is as you spend time in fellowship with him. Do you know how Jesus got acquainted with the Father? He spent time with him. He drew aside. He went and he took time to fellowship with the Father. And then he could come back and speak with the authority of God and come against every situation and win over it. Other than that, he couldn't do it. But all of us just thought, well, when Jesus came, he had a name, and that name just automatically had power. No, we have to earn. He had to earn that power. But you know what? Today, we don't have to work for it. We have that power when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior. And then when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you have even more power. Another thing I want to tell you, do you know that when you get to heaven, who are you expecting to see on the throne? Who will be sitting on the throne? Where will the Father be? The Father, according to Colossians, thought it pleasing to abide in Jesus. So when you get to heaven on the throne, you're going to see Jesus. But we're going to ask now, where's the Holy Ghost? What do you think the answer to that's going to be? Now, if he's going to be in you in heaven, you already have the power to live as you are living in heaven here. Do you understand? I want you to think about that for one minute. If you say to me that when you get to heaven and you're going to ask, where's the Holy Ghost? He's going to say, where's the Holy Ghost? In us. Where's the Holy Ghost now? In us. So don't you know that you can live as you would live in heaven? You can live here on earth. With the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. You should be clapping hands and shouting and jumping right now. Amen. We have the power and the authority that Jesus had because he gave it to us. But the reason we don't know it is because we haven't taken the time to get acquainted with this divine power that is on the inside of us. It's like having money in the bank but going around saying you're poor. You go and buy something and then you want to buy something and say, well, I've got no money. But you don't realize actually your bank account is overflowing. All you have to do is write out the check. But you'll never know because you've never taken the time to get acquainted with the Father. I want to share a little bit with you today from the old and the new. I'm going to share about you, with you with two people. In the Old Testament, give me one person you think that I will talk to you about that that even though he lived in the old covenant under the law, he knew who he was. One person. 
David. Why do I say David? God said that David was a man after his own heart. But David didn't know Jesus like you and I know. The Holy Ghost didn't abide in David. He only came upon him. Go with me to Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 18. While you're opening your Bible, I'm going to read you something. This is what some of the things the Holy Ghost was saying to me. The Word of God is vitally important in our lives. We are spirit beings. We are not ordinary people. I always tell you that. I'm like a broken record, stuck record. I always tell you, you're not ordinary. But you can't hear it once and forget about it. You've got to keep talking. So the talking keeps you. Listen to what I'm saying to you this morning. Receive what I have on the inside of me. When, don't look at the vessel. Receive the word that's going to come out of the vessel this morning. I used to think that it was such a scary thing to stand in pastor's shoes. I submit to his authority 100%, more than 100%. Actually, I would gladly hand over to him to preach this morning because it's easier to listen to, to the words that he preaches because he spends such a lot of time in the word. For me, that works. I don't get that much time to spend in the Word as I'd like to. But that doesn't stop me from spending time while I'm working with an earpiece in my ear. That's how I work. I work with an earpiece stuck in my ear, stuck into the computer. And instead of music, I'm playing the Word in my ear so that I can grow. But I know who I am. I know what I have on the inside of me. I've spent years meditating on the Word of God. I've spent years living right in the righteousness of God. Not in my own righteousness, because in my own self, I'm not a good person. I'm just the way you are. But Christ in me, the hope of glory. You too. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Do you know you're more a spirit being than a natural being? The only reason you are more aware of your physical body is because you've practiced with your, spiritual, your physical body more than you have with your Spirit man, you know more about your five senses than you do know about your spirit man. Now you need to turn it around and you need to start to activate the spirit man. You need to start to train your spirit man that it becomes so acute that even when you touch something, your spiritual senses start to understand and discern better than your natural senses. Did you get what I said to you? You know when you, a mother knows the sound of a child's cry? You know when there can be five babies crying, but you know. Mothers, you know. You know who your child is that's crying. Papa God is exactly the same. There can be five people crying. He knows you cry. He knows you by name. Mark said something here two weeks ago. He said when you raise your hands up to the Lord... Every one of our fingerprints are different. Every one of us, as we raise our hands to the Lord, he knows that's Beta, that's Wendy, that, that's Adrian. That, he knows. So never let the enemy rob you of that thought. Start to change your life. And the only way you'll change your life is as you practice the word of God. Look at David. David knew the presence of God. He was a shepherd boy. Shepherding sheep, yet the power of God would come upon him that he would tear lion and tear bear. Why would that be? Because David understood the covenant that he had with God. That is why when Samuel had to go and anoint a king, it wasn't hard for God to choose a king. He already knew David just as he knew you. Those of you that were at the prayer meeting on Friday night, he said, for I know the plans I have for you. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, I know the plans I have for you. For good and not for evil. God has a plan. He knows every one of you by name. Don't sit there thinking, oh, God doesn't know me and who am I? I'm just coming to church. No. In the realm of the heavenlies, the angels came to church with you this morning. They are ministering heirs to the heirs of salvation. They are 
you're with you. God knows you by name. You're not here by accident. You are here to receive the engrafted word of God that will equip you for what you're going to go through this week. But it's up to you to receive and to perceive and to understand who you are so that you can overcome the things that life will throw at you. Let me read you something else. It says here, we are created by the word of God, not of the will of man or the will of flesh, but by the word. Everything you'll ever need is wrapped up in the word. Everything you'll ever need is in the word. Who is the word? Jesus. So when you have Jesus, you have the word. And the word will overcome every situation in your life. The word also takes a hold of your inner man and starts to increase the God life in you. The Zoe life in you is increased as you start to eat of the word of God. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. So what is he saying? He's not saying don't eat. He says, but let that not be the priority of your life. The priority is the word. Verse 12, if you think I've forgotten, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 12 says, Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. Now I want to tell you, Saul was a man who had been selected by the people. Not selected by God. Selected by the people. But God identified him as a man that would rule over the people. When the Spirit of the Lord was with Saul, he was a success. He prophesied. He overcame. But then he gave up on that. It was so bad that a spirit had come to him to disturb him. And he needed David to come and actually minister to him in song. But you know what? When the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, you know you are guaranteed for success. Every one of you in the midst in, of the uh, sound of my voice, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. You are blessed. You are anointed. You are packaged for success. Everything you'll ever need is already on the inside of you. You are just not ordinary. You're not just sitting here. You know what happens, what jumps on the inside of you when the word goes forth? The word that's already in you, the platform, the next word that goes there gets ignited by the word that's already on the inside of you. And your faith starts to increase because the word says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, in verse 14, look at what it says. David acted wisely in all his ways and succeeded and the Lord was with him. So you see, when we say to you that you are success, we're not just saying you're a success. We're telling you from the word of God, according to 1 Samuel chapter 18, if David was a success with only the spirit of God coming upon him at certain times, how much more you, that the spirit of God dwells in you continually, abides in you. Why do I say that? Go with me to chapter 14 of uh, John. John chapter 14, verse 16. As you're going there, I'm going to read you something else. It says, you have to know your rights and privileges. The word says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. If we do not know what we are entitled to, then we will suffer. I'm going to major on that a little bit. How many of you are going through a hard time at the moment? Be it an area financially or you're feeling that it's just that there's lack. I want to say to you, get a hold of the word. Start to understand who you are. And then even though those challenges will face you, you'll turn around and say, I am a success. I can never be disadvantaged. I can never be in lack. Do you know why you'll say that? Even though in the natural realm, the situation may temporarily stay the way it was. But ultimately, it has to change because the word that you speak has power. The word that you speak has dominion and it has the power to effect changes. So the circumstances around you have to change. You want to say to me, no, I think you're a little bit deranged. No, the word has power. And soon, 
the more you say the word, the more your situation will change. You know what? Even if it doesn't want to change, the seed that is in the word will activate it and make it change. It has to change. It can never stay the same. But you've got to keep talking the word. You can't stop talking the word. No, don't talk stories. Stories are just stories, and that's history. You need to prophesy. You need to talk. Because as you talk, the same word that was in God when he said, let there be, your circumstance will be, let there be a change. Yeah. Verse 16 says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, a counselor, a helper, intercessor, an advocate, a strengthener, and a standby. My, my, this is what you continually have on the inside of you. When you're faced with the decision, don't say, I don't know what to do. You, go, you look on the inside of you and you start to say, Holy Ghost, you're there. Holy Ghost, you have the wisdom because the word of God says that Jesus has become my wisdom, my sanctification, my righteousness, my redemption. So you don't have to be afraid when you have a decision to make. You don't have to be afraid because the answer is already on the inside of you. You're packaged with success. You already have it on the inside of you. The Holy Ghost is controlling you. So you don't have to suffer. You don't have to be where you're at. You have the power to change that. Not me. I can only tell you, but you have the power to change it. When you're going through something, I want to tell you, go into your room, get a hold of your Bible, go to the book room and buy yourself some tapes and sit and listen. And when people come to talk to you, they say, just hold on, hold on. Until I have my release, until I meet Baal Perizam, the God of the breakthrough, I ain't leaving this place. Until, like Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. You stay in that room and you start to work on the word of God. And you start to remind God, you said, if I ask anything in your name, believing, I shall receive. Then, Lord, it's time to effect the changes. You are a king and a priest unto God. You are a peculiar people. You are not ordinary. Please, if I look at every one of you, you are the beautiful people of the city of Zion. You live in Zion. Every prayer that you will ever say will be yours and answered. And some of you are saying it's taking a bit long. Your season is about to change. Your season is about to change. You have the right to change your season. You cannot stay there. You have planted enough seed on the inside of you for your season to change. The anointing and the Holy Ghost is upon you to effect changes. You don't only make changes for yourself, for the people around you. Do you know what? When you in this generation sow enough seed, by the time your children come and your grandchildren come, they never have to work hard because you as the grandparent or the parent has already paved the way. Hallelujah. You've paved the way that they are blessed already. You sow the seed. And let me tell you something. Do you know that the children of Zion can never say that I'm sick? If you are sick, you need to go back. You need to look at the word and remind the word. You have the power to change the sickness that is on the inside of me. I refuse to accept the sickness. Zion does not have sickness. Zion does not have illnesses. There's nothing about that that's on the inside of me. Because the word is perfect. The word is perfect. Go with me to the book of Mark. When I tell you the word is perfect, come let me show you something in the book of Mark. Jesus had it all. The Bible says that the Word, He was the Word of God. And the Word came unto His own, and He received it not. But the Word make, has the power to change you. And the Word is on the inside of you. Look at these Sadducees and Pharisees. Oh, man, they were really sad, you see. I mean, they had the cheek to ask Jesus things. I mean, they even said this. They said they would actually come to him to ask him questions so that they could test him. How can you test the word? How can you test the word? They said to him, they came to him and they said to him, Master, by what authority do you cast out demons and do all of these things? So he turned around and asked them, by what authority do you accept the baptism of John? And then he turned around and he said to, they, they said to him, oh, well, if we say it's because of men, they're going to stone us. And if we say if it's by God, then we actually, so they said, no, we don't know. 
So he says, then I also don't know. And then I don't have to tell you about what authority. He knew what to say and when to say it. You know, when you have the Holy Ghost in you, don't argue. Don't even cause a fight. You know, when somebody comes to argue with you, just keep quiet. When they want to argue with you, tell, you remind yourself that the righteousness of God is not wrought by anger and strife. But the word of God will overcome that strife. So when they want to fight with you, you just keep quiet. Let them talk. They'll keep talking. Let them talk. And then when they finish, the Holy Ghost will give you just one word. Like Jesus had that word. They came to him and they said to him, should any of you pay taxes? Jesus says, bring me the coin. Looked at the coin. Turned around and he said, whose face is on this coin? He says, Caesar. He says, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And render unto God the things that are God's. He knew what to say. You know what to say. You have the answer on the inside of you. You know what to say. You know what? When you have a contract or a deal to do, don't think, oh, and go and palm this one and palm that one so you can get. No, the favor of God is upon you already. The answer for that contract's yours already. Because he said, speak the word and it shall be done. He just said, speak. And you know what? You don't have to underquote or overquote. You just ask the Holy Ghost what to quote. He'll tell you what to quote. And then he'll pave the way. He opens the way. He is the way because you are the way. He is in you. You are the way. So you must get the contract. In your job, don't sit there and wonder, what must I do? He says, you are the way, the truth, and the life. He says, he's not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So the sound mind in you has the answer already. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't wonder why. Know why. But the only way you'll know that, as you begin to spend time in the word of God and get the glory of the Lord, begin to magnify in your life. As you spend time and fellowship with the Father, that's when the spirit man becomes strong. Stronger than the physical man. Now, even though you may be a big person or a small person, automatically the spirit man begins to come out of that physical man. He starts to transcend and dominate that physical man. That's what you need to do. That is why we keep saying to you, spend time in the word. You have the answer to life that people need. It's on the inside of you, deep on the inside of you. Deep calleth unto deep. When you leave your house, you plead the blood of Jesus over your house, and you tell the enemy you have no right to come and rob this house. I, that, that's the authority you have. It doesn't matter whether it's a child or you have the authority to tell that thing or Whatever for has been formed to try and destroy or steal from you, you have the power to tell them, stop. You have the power if there's a leakage in your house for the power of God in you, for the wisdom to fix it. And if you don't have the, a chance to fix it because it's at night, you can tell that st thing to stay. I've seen it. I've seen it. Don't go worrying. Oh, what must I do? Oh, I've got to phone this one. Gotta... No. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. My peace I give unto you. So in the, we should not be an anxious people. We should never be in fear. No. If fear comes, you've got to stand and look at yourself and take stock. Where is that coming from? It's not of God. It's not from the city of Zion. A citizen of Zion does not take on fear. Oh, come on, child of God. Come on, child of God. When you get a bull and that bull is not, and they're telling you about seven days and whatever, you look at that bull and you say, you're only a name. You're only a name. And by the name of Jesus, I speak to you. I've paid my tithes. I hope you're paying your tithes. Because when you're paying your tithes, you already have protection. So that bull doesn't have dominion over you. You dominate the bull. And you say to that bull, in seven days, you're going to see more than what you are asking me. And the people that have sent this, they're going to have something good. I'm going to get a better letter that's going to tell me I have the best credit rating. No, you know what happens? We get scared. And the minute we start to get afraid, you know who we attract? The enemy. 
Because he starts to understand, no, they don't know who they are. So let's send another devil there. Now, besides that, because you were scared, you looked at that bill, he sends you something else. Oh, ma, you scrunched in now. Ooh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? No, no. You turn around and you say, you spirit of lack, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I take authority over you. I am a child of the king. I am a king and a priest. And I begin to decree. I call forth money in the name of Jesus. Now, when you start talking like that, you're repelling. That's what the Bible talks about. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Not having a fight with him, no. You resist by the word. You overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of his testimony. When your body starts to feel something that it shouldn't be there, you don't go, hmm, that's sensory perception. We are not people of the flesh. We don't go by our feelings. Our feelings, we dominate our feelings. So when the feeling starts to tell you, oh, when you start sneezing immediately, oh, I think I'm getting the flu. Well, you just invited it. When you start to sneeze, you command your body to align itself to the word of God. The word of God is, the children of Zion shall never say, I am sick. The children of Zion shall never say, I am poor, because Jesus became poor that we might become rich. So I'm not talking to you heresy. I'm talking to you what the word says. The only reason you are where you are is because you started to accept the things of the world. You've been conditioned by the world. Psychology says, you know, conditioning, you've been, something's been done to you so long that it's become a part of your nature. Now, I want to tell you, you no longer have that worldly nature. You've had the divine exchange take place. You have the nature of God in you. So when the world tries to condition you, you repel it. Because it's not of the city of Zion. As a citizen of Zion, you have everything that pertains unto godliness, life and godliness. Do you know that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father? But you are seated with him in heavenly places. You, not, not just me, you and I are seated with him in heavenly places. So when you are speaking, you're not speaking from earth. You're speaking from heaven to earth. The kingdom's already come. It's on the inside of you. You have the right and the authority as a king to decree those things over your life. Some of you are looking at me and saying, well, that's okay for you because you have everything. I didn't always have everything. I spoke it into being. I spoke it. Now, if I can speak it, you can speak it. I mean, I was listening to somebody that came to visit last night. This little boy hurt his toe with the spade. He went to the hospital. You know, while he was with me, I never saw him whimper once. And you know what came to my mind and to my heart? He's already a child of Zion. Because he's not moaning and groaning or crying, he was sitting there. I mean, his little brother prayed for him as well. Now, you young people, you are already becoming citizens of Zion. You'll never know defeat. You'll never be conditioned to the world because the word that is now coming into you transcends anything that you've ever heard. You'll never accept just anything. In fact, where your parents would have accepted just something menial, you'll say, no thanks, that's not for me. I was listening to Mark tell me the other day, Tessin phoned her sister to say she needs a pair of shoes. And when she got it, Tessin said, no, I don't like that pair. Now, in the natural, it sounds like you're so ungrateful. But you know, when you know what you want, it's very hard to accept a fake. <laughs> Sorry, Wendy. <laughs> but it's true. I have a son like that. He's, oh, you can't buy him just anything. It's got to have a name. And I ask him why. He says, you've got to buy quality, mom. Okay, let me read you some of the stuff here. Exactly. You've got to know. A king knows who they are. A king walks like a king. You are a special breed of people. You are not a normal lot of people. When you walk into a room, the atmosphere changes. You are an atmosphere changer. Not because of who you are, but because of Christ in you, the hope of glory. But you can walk into a room and the room could stay the same only because you haven't realized who you are. 
You are a special breed of people. You are in covenant with a great and a mighty God, a God who created the heavens and the earth. Do you know something? That nothing is good enough for a child of God, except if God has designed it for him. The new creation being is not an earthly creation being. You may be in the world, but you're not of this world. Your spirit man already transcends the minute you accept the spirit of God on the inside of you. The minute you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are changed. You are transformed. You become a new creation being. And you say to me this morning, but Sister Mary, I've heard that before. What did I say when I started? I said, the key to mastery is training and practice. If you look at those kung fu, whatever those people are, those ninjas, they practice every day. I mean, you go to the gym. Have you seen the people at the gym? They got six packs and whatever, but they go to gym anyway. Now, how come? I don't see them buying a pair of shoes, 365 pairs of shoes for, to go to gym. They wear the same pair until that pair is done. Now, how come you don't want to read the word of God every day, the same word? That same word. The Nike shoe is just a shoe that can actually... In fact, God's Nike word, it's the word for you. Do you know the children of Israel walked for 40 years and the shoes never... Talk about Nike. What's that? Talk about the word. I mean, the word will change and transform you forever. You don't need to just... They will practice at the gym at the same machine, the toning machine and those weights. The Bible says don't put on the... Get rid of the weights that dot so easily beset you. In Christ there's freedom. In Christ there's liberty. In Christ there is such joy, unspeakable and full of glory. I want to stop. I want to tell you something before I carry on reading. One of the secrets of this Christian life is keep your joy. Keep your joy. Because the Bible says in Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The original version of that is the joy of the Lord is a garrison around me. Did you know that? It's a fence around me. When you have a fence around you with your joy, then no matter what faces you, you will be able to overcome it. You'll be, the minute you lose your joy, you lose your strength. And you can't afford that. Child of God, the only way you are trained to live this life is by the word of God and by the spirit of God. Your, the only time the glory of the Father will become greater than the world to you is as you spend time in the word and have fellowship with the Father. You need to get into the presence of God. There's nothing more wonderful than the presence of God. There's nothing more beautiful than the face of Jesus. There's nothing more sweet then the word of God, it's like honey. You'll no longer think of yourself so small. You'll know who you are. You are not a victim. You will never be a victim. Not now, not ever. You are a victor. You are being trained to reign in the heavenlies. In fact, right now, you have the power to cast down principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and wicked spirits. You have the power already. It's already on the inside of you. But the only time you'll have authority is as you spend time in the word and in the spirit of God. And then your authority level will start to increase. And the grace will come upon your life. Do you remember? Pastor was praying for us and he started to prophesy grace. The grace of God will begin to increase upon your life that no matter what you face, you'll be clear to overcome. I want to tell you something. As you begin to spend time with God, you won't have to worry about what's coming. In fact, you'll know before ahead of time. I'm telling you now, before it happens, you'll know. You'll know. You won't have to go to marriage seminars. You just need a word seminar. That's all you need is you need the word. If you're fighting with your husband and husband and wives, you're fighting, go to the word. As you spend time in the word, you'll, the love of God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it'll start to overcome the areas in your life. You know what it takes away is the selfishness. Because the only reason for an argument is selfishness. It's because you want your own way. And I'm right, don't you know? Oh, come on, you married people. You're looking at me as if to say. And brothers and sisters, why do you argue? 
Brethren, why do you argue? Because you always want to be right. Why do you want to be right? Because of selfishness. The Bible says that because we are in Christ, we are not sin conscious. We can never sin. Oh my, I'm looking at your face now. <laughs> you can't sin. The only way to sin is if you're selfish. So the minute you're selfish, know you're sinning. But you can't be selfish because Christ in you, the hope of glory, He has strengthened you. So you don't need to fight, you need the Word. And the Word will make you overcome. Even in your workplace, stop trying to fight to be top dog. Promotion is yours already. You don't have to fight to get it. It's already yours. You just need to understand it. Until you understand it, you'll be fighting. And how many of you can tell me that you always find yourself arguing and bickering. You just automatically, you don't even know why you do it. Because you've opened the door to an evil spirit that is oppressing you. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. The only, how do I get rid of it? By the word and the spirit. Many of you are fasting, you are praying, but you're in the same place. Can I tell you why? The spirit of religion drives you to pray and fast. So what happens when you fast and you pray, you tick off, oh, I'm a good person. I'm so good. I fasted and I prayed. So? No spirit. You're dead. You're dead. All you're servicing is the altar of the flesh. You can pray all the right prayers. You can say all the right things. If the spirit and the anointing is not in it, it's dead. It's dead. I know many people that fast every Tuesday and every Friday. A lot of people fast on a Tuesday because they come from their old religion. So on Tuesdays they don't eat meat or whatever. But it comes now in the guise of fasting. Get away from that religious thinking. Please break it today in the name of Jesus. If it's not led by the spirit, it's of the flesh. And we don't need to live in the flesh. He says he who liveth unto the flesh is death. But he walketh on the spirit is life and peace and godliness. So I want to say to you today, I'm not telling you not to pray. What I'm telling you is to find the mind of the Spirit. God is in this place. Do you know that? He already has giftings in this place. But it's how you're receiving whether you're going to get your answer or not. You need to be so alert that even when you're driving, the Spirit of God is speaking to you. You need an answer. He's got the answer for you already. But what has happened is you're so closed. You're so aware of the flesh that you're not hearing what the Spirit of God is talking to you on the inside. I think I better come to a close. Let me read you something else here. It says the presence of God is vital for con continued success. The presence and the Word of God is there for you. This is how you are packaged for success. The Word of God in you and the Spirit of God in you has packaged you for success already. He says success is from your spirit. You are not controlled by yourselves. You are a new creation being. The life of God in you. You are success and the spirit of God lives on the inside of you. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. When we know what this treasure is, fear disappears. Only the word constantly being in you and fed into your spirit can change the way you think and perceive. Do not be controlled by your sensory perceptions. When you are born again, then only can you see the glory of God. The power of God is not only available to you and to me, but it's working on the inside of you right now. The power of God is not only available to you, but it's working on the inside of you right now. The power of God is not only available, but working in you. The Spirit of the Lord was on David. Therefore, he had continual success. The spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, hence he was in a state of despair. His flesh reigned. He had thoughts of murder and other fruits of the flesh. In fact, he even resorted to mediums because he did not have access to the spirit of God. But you and I have access to the spirit of God. So we have continual success, continuous present tense, the spirit of God in you. To have the right to dominate over circumstances. David, on the other hand, flowed in the Spirit of God and had good success. He recognized that God was with him, but he did not give himself over to the flesh. You know, David was so powerful. 
that he had, Saul wanted to kill him. He had opportunity to kill Saul. But David operated in the principles of God's word. You and I want success, and one of the principles is you have to sow in order to reap. But many of us, when we get money, the first thing we do is we, put, we want to keep away for the rainy day. Well, I want to tell you the rainy day comes from a spirit of fear, so it's not from Zion. So don't put it away for the rainy day. What are you preparing for the rainy day for? You need to be preparing for the rain of the Spirit. And the only way you'll get rain is if you sow of your time and of, your, of, of the Word and of your talent into the presence of God. And when you do that, your cloud starts to form. And the more you sow, the greater the cloud becomes. And the greater and the heavier the cloud, the greater the blessing of the pouring of the blessing over your life. We, on the other hand, have to rely on the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, because our portion, we become born again and we too walk and fulfill the life of the spirit, which is peace and joy and life and good success. Let the same mind and attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus was obedient and gave us the opportunity to be be just like he was. He cast out demons. You can cast out demons. He healed the sick. You can heal the sick. He raised the dead. You can raise the dead. But he also knew exactly who he was. It did not matter what situation he faced. He knew exactly what to do and how to respond. Child of God, it's about time you stood up tall. You stood up tall and begin to say to yourself, I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. I have overcome every situation because Jesus said, I have overcome the world. You can overcome the world. It is time that you and I know exactly who we are. We will face adverse circumstances, but it's about time we dominated and did not become overwhelmed. Too many of us become overwhelmed. Too many of us have fear. And you listen, the minute you speak to somebody, they're going to tell you how bad things are. I want you to start turning that around. I want you to start saying how good things are. It doesn't matter. You've got to override your sensory perception. Your seeing must start to change. Even though you see adverse circumstances, your spirit man must be so strong that what you see in the spirit becomes real to you. You need to start living that way. And when you start to live that way, then let me tell you something. Automatically what you picture will become reality. Your life is a picture of your tongue. Think about that. Why am I saying that? What you said is what you're living. What you said yesterday is what you're living today. You have the power to change that. Come on, say that. I have the power to change. I have the power to change circumstances. Come, let's stand. Let's stand. Say this after me. I was born to rule and reign in this life through Jesus. For I have received of the abundance of grace. And the gift of righteousness. The The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. And And he has willed everything. everything To Abraham and his seed. seed. I am Abraham's seed by faith. I am am the king's kid. kid. Therefore the world is my inheritance. inheritance. I I refuse the down life. For I am seated in the heavenly realms with Jesus Christ. All the good things of life are mine. All the good things of life are mine. All the good things of life are mine. Oh, if you're not saying it, you're not going to get it. If you're not saying it, you're not going to receive it. You can only change the atmosphere by your word. All the good things of life are mine. I have the life of God in me. Greater is He that is in me 
than he that's in the world. I have the peace of God ruling in me. I am a king. I am a priest unto my God. I have overcome the world. Everything of the good life is mine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Everything of the good life is mine. Everything that pertains unto life is mine. What are you going to do when death comes? You're going to look death in the face and say, with long life has God satisfied me. What are you going to say when defeat comes? You're going to say, I am a victor, not a victim. That's, I'm teaching you something. You need to receive it. When poverty comes, what are you going to say? I am not poor because Jesus became poor that I might become rich. Hallelujah. When you face lack, what are you going to say? I know no lack. I have more than I need. I'm able to have even more than I'll ever need. Amen. I have no lack. You cast out the spirit of lack in the name of Jesus. When you face with losing your job, what do you say? You say that the job is not my source. My source is in God. My source is in the living God. My wells are in God, in the word of God. Even though they say to you, you're going to be retrenched, you say, Father, if you're closing the door, it will be closed. But if you want the door open, it will stay open. Doesn't matter what they say. Amen. You need to start thinking like that. You really need to start changing from being a victim to a victor. You've got to start saying to yourself, as you get out of the bed every day, you say, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am, devil? I am the righteousness of God. The life of God is in me. Devil, you are in trouble today. I have overcome. I am more than a conqueror. I will not be defeated. I cannot be disadvantaged. I will overcome. Nothing in this life will ever take a hold of me. Because Christ in me, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. You need to start to do that, child of God. You need to start walking in a place and know I have come because Christ in me, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. And when sickness comes, you know Mr. Sickness, he likes to visit because this natural body is decaying every day. But you know what? Even as the natural body is decaying, the life of God in me is greater than the sin and death that is trying to perish my dead body. Hallelujah. It's about time you took your place. It's about time you start to drive yourself into the victory that God has called for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing of the Lord is upon you. Do you know what the anointing does? It destroys yokes and lifts burdens. It makes a river in the desert. Do you remember Pastor ministered a word? He says, God only uses fat people. <laughs> but what fat? You're looking, no, no, I don't mean. <laughs> he means, he said, faithful people, available people. And teachable people. That's what he said. Are you faithful? Faithful in what? In the word. Available. You need to make yourself available. Even in the presence of God. As the word begins to take a hold of you. The word of God becomes quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. You become quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Now you're going to say to me, why do you say that? Because you become what you partake of. If you're partaking of the word, the word becomes you. So according to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, if the word is quick and powerful, you are quick and powerful.